Seems like whenever I leave Delaware for a few weeks, the fellas get very busy on my block. So as some of you know, uh, I was in California for a couple of weeks taking care of some family business, and I just returned a few not too long ago. And, uh, you know, when I got back to good old 26th Street in Wilmington, Delaware, which you're looking at now, uh, I have a cigar with True to Roof or invite the great Willie Shields over, talk show host and author of Exit 13A. We sit out there, solve a few of the world's problems, and while we do, a steady stream of neighbors will come walking up, uh, you know, up to my chair or my house, and they'll tell me what's been happening in my absence. The fellas have been very, very busy in my absence. Let's take a quick look at what they've been up to on 26th Street, including with some video. Then let's take a look at, well, maybe what I have not been very successful at convincing my neighbors as to why the cops don't reply when they dial 911. Why don't we start up the, uh, up the corner here, walk up to the corner. And, uh, hey, what's up? So, there's a for sale sign on that house right there. Anyway, so while I was gone, a couple of the fellas called in some uh, pizza and some Chinese delivery, and the food was delivered here to an empty house. Didn't take long for the fellas to uh, steal the food, steal the money, and beat the hell out of the person uh, who was delivering the food but my neighbors god bless them saw some of this happening they saw the guys run down this way so they did and, and you know what if all of you guys said you would have acted equally heroically well let's just say you never know until it really happens anyway so the fellows were running this way they went over here and then they went into one of these two houses right here so by this time, the police are on the way. My neighbors are keeping an eye on the houses. And uh, they, they turned around, went back up to 26th Street. They saw the cops here, and they go, hey, 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 we know where they are. They're in one of these two houses. We saw them run into one of these houses. I think it was this one here on the right. The cops goes, okay, we got it. We got it under control, fellas. The cops go knock on the door, come back five minutes later, and go, um... Yeah, nobody answers the door. I guess we can't catch the guys. Well, that wasn't the first time that that happened in my absence. The same thing happened right here. Right there, just a couple weeks before that. A couple of the fellas stood out front here, ordered some food. It got delivered. The delivery guy got beaten and, got the, and, and robbed. And a few houses... Uh, well, I'm not, I, want, I don't want to dox my neighbor, but also while I was gone a few houses up the street, one of my neighbors had their car stolen. But all the time, some of these things happen. These are just the major ones, right? A lot of times there's some things happening that aren't major. But call 911, the cops don't show up. I mean, let's take a look at this case. And then let's see if we can figure out why the cops are so hesitant to answer 911 calls in this neighborhood, even though every time they have one of these police community relation meetings, that's all they really tell us. Anyway, I had just been home for a couple days, and the great Willie Shields was coming over to smoke a cigar, so he gets out of his car, comes up to the door, clunk, 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 knocks in, comes in. And we're sitting in the porch. We're sitting right where he knocked we're getting ready to smoke a cigar, but not yet. So we're, well, I think we were watching a ball game, and the, and the television, this is the exact view, almost the exact view from my television. The, the view actually comes from the ring video, right? Anyway, so uh, all of a sudden we start to see a bunch of the fellas and their lovely ladies congregating out front, and some of my neighbors are out there too. Now me... Their little hairs went up on the back of my neck. I was not afraid, but I was aware that there was some funny, might have been some funny business going on out there. But I couldn't really hear anything. But I did see that there were a lot of fellas and their lovely ladies congregating out there on people's cars, on their steps and everything. And this didn't strike me as uh, 
100% normal copacetic thing to do. But I didn't hear any loud voices. I had the windows open. I didn't hear any loud voices. I saw a few of my neighbors poking around out there. I didn't hear any voices there either. Well, the next thing you know, I mean, the, 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 the fellas and their lovely ladies, they're kind of going from car to car, checking the handles. They're kind of sitting on cars. They're, you know, my, a few of my neighbors come out. They exchange some angry words. And, you know, it got kind of weird. So my, one of my neighbors calls the cops. And he goes, look, the people who are responsible for a lot of crime in this neighborhood are now right in front of good old Colin's house. They're in front of a lot of our houses right now. Can you respond right now and come at least talk to them? Tell them to get the hell out of here. That's one call. A little bit later, another call. The, 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 911, the 911 operator says, yes, we're aware of your call. So nothing happened, except for you know the you know except for a few a few more neighbors congregated out front, and pretty soon they kind of shooed these fellas and their lovely ladies uh, off the street. Now the whole time again, I didn't know anything potentially bad was happening. I was kind of look kind of watching it, but at the same time, I really, I really don't think. The people that are on my block who do such a great job of keeping their houses up, keeping their driveways up, their lawns up, they really do a great, do a great job of really keeping this place in good shape despite all the argy-bargy that happens around here. I kind of, I kind of, once in a while I kind of tell them, I don't force it on them, but if I think if they're open to it, I tell them this. That people like my brother and his friends and people on the city council, they actually have a much different and a much more realistic view of what's happening on this block and in blocks all around this, this chocolate city. I mean, they know the people that have been around here for a long time, and especially my brother and all of his political buddies who now sit on the city council and have created these policies. They know that there are too many black people in prison for no reason whatsoever. And the co this isn't just something they talk about amongst themselves. This is something they talk about at their city council meetings. They Facebook it. They put it on their Twitter page. They anytime and if you go if you go to Barnes and Noble and you go back to the black literature section, this is a hugely I don't know if anybody buys the books, but there's a lot of them back there. You know, I'm thinking of the new Jim Crow, thinking of the t books by Tana Hazy Coates. They're pretty much all the same books, which talks about black victimization, white racism. Now, there's so many black people in prison for no reason whatsoever. And so this is really the, and it's the official and unapologetic, nobody's looking over their shoulder policy of a city like Wilmington, is that the people you're looking at right now who are hassling my neighbors, threatening them, messing with their property, not just, and this is in the middle of the day. The people you're looking at now, they're the victims. They're the victims of white racism that has forced them to come up here and to spread this kind of mayhem and chaos on this block in the middle of the day. Happens a lot. And so, but, but my neighbors really, as nice as they are, as smart as they are, I can't get them to get their minds around it. I can't get them to grok this. You can call the cops all you want, but the cops really aren't interested in, in doing anything to the fellas and their lovely ladies because they think the fellas and their lovely ladies are victims. And the people who are calling, they think they are the ones who are the bad people. I know this is hard to get your mind around, but people like my brother and his buddies, they actually have a much more realistic view of it. They're the ones always locking their doors, always turning their lights on, and, 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 you know, I know that's that's the, the official anti-crime policy for the city of Wilmington is ignore black violence, ignore criminality and turn your porch light on. This is how these people roll. This is how the people who run this city roll. And the people who and, 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 and the people who do the damage, cause the chaos, cause the mayhem. They know it better than anybody, but my fr my friends, my good neighbors, uh, 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 the nicest people you ever want to meet, 
They just can't get their minds around the fact that if somebody's doing something wrong on their block, if somebody's destroying property, creating mayhem, threatening the homeowners, they cannot get their minds around when they make a call on that. They make lots of calls on that because this stuff happens a lot. They can't get their minds around the fact that nobody gives a damn about them. I mean, one time, one of the first times they called, the, the cop, a white cop and a black cop, come over because the fellas had been spraying graffiti on their house. And one of my neighbor, newer neighbors goes, what's up with that? You know, what, you know, what are you guys going to do to get these people off of our street that are doing so much damage here? The cops go, you know what? If you don't like it here, you should move. Then the cops started explaining to my neighbor that his brother-in-law lives up in, like, Pennsylvania, and he never has these problems, so you should just move. That's the way the people who run these cities are, are, are uh, that's what they think. They're reading the books, they're very proud of the books, they're very happy that they're part of this effort called criminal justice reform to make sure we don't send all these innocent black people to prison for no reason whatsoever. I mean, people get, if you draw a quarter mile if you draw a quarter mile uh, circle around that car you're looking at right now, I would say in the last year or two, there have been 10 people shot. That doesn't count all the other crimes that fall below that. All the robberies, the kids getting robbed on the way to school, the dozens and dozens of cars that have been broken into and ransacked. And the best the city council people, the people who run this town can do, and my brother and all his buddies can do, is just tr shrug their shoulders and say, well, hey, what do you want us to do? Put those people in prison for breaking the law? That's the worst case scenario, because doing that, that makes the black kids angry. <laughs>